So one solution is virtualization for our previous problem. So, so the problem is when you build a software or the application which works on your machine, it may not work on someone else's machine. It's because even if they do the configuration, which consumes a lot of time in terms of installation, configuration, even if you do that, it might not work. And to solve that problem, we are saying, okay, we can use something called virtualization. Now, before we understand how we can solve the problem with virtualization, let's understand what is virtualization. So what happens is, when you talk about your system, so let's say any, any system in which you work, even your mobile phone or your desktop, laptop, servers, they all do the same thing. What you have is you have a basic hardware, okay? So you have a hardware layer. Now this is your actual hardware, your CPU, RAM, motherboard, all the stuff. Now on top of this hardware, to make it work, of course as a user, we'll not be interacting with the hardware directly. What you need in between is OS. Now this is your operating system, which can be Windows, Linux, Mac, doesn't matter. There are multiple OS options available. So if you want to use your hardware, the only way you can do that is with the help of operating systems. And that's why when you buy a laptop, you get two things, not one. You're not just buying a laptop, you're buying Windows with it. Yeah, they say they, they give it for free, but you do pay for it. Okay. Keeping that aside, you got a hardware and you got an OS. Now, in real world, we directly don't use OS, right? We use software. For example, if you want to add two numbers, you can't simply ask your OS to add two numbers. You need a calculator. Now you might be saying, hey, you know, calculator you will find in every device. Not exactly. If, I don't know if you have used iPad. We don't have calculator there. Anyway, but you can install it. The point is, if you want to perform any operation, you need an application or a software. And as a user, you use software. Software talks to OS, OS talks to hardware. That's how the flow is. Now let's say as a developer, how will you use virtualization? So what you do is, if you want to use virtualization, you will be installing another OS. Okay, now that's tricky. How will you install two OS on the same machine? I mean, of course, we can do dual boot where you have two OS in the same system, but at one time, you can use only one. Something like if you have a laptop, you can install Windows or you can use Ubuntu. You can install both as a dual setup or dual OS, but then you can use only one at a time. In virtualization, you use two OS at the same time. What we do is we have a hardware and then we install our OS. Now this is your host OS, the main OS. Now on top of it, you can install one more OS, but then how it exactly it will work? Because if you want to install, let's say we have a hardware, you have a Windows on top of it, and now you want to use Ubuntu. Now, when you try to install Ubuntu on Windows, Windows will say, what are you doing? You can't install OS on OS. So Ubuntu says, even if you install me, you need a hardware. So what you do is you fake it. You say, okay, what if you can fool Ubuntu by saying, you know, let me give you something in between, which is not a hardware, but it will behave like a hardware. Now that is your virtual hardware, or we can say virtual machine. So you have a hardware, on top of that, you got a OS, on top of that, you got a machine, which is not a physical machine, but a virtual machine, which is actually a software, which fakes like it's a hardware. And then on top of that, you can install Ubuntu. Now this is called virtualization where you are installing an OS on a virtual hardware or a virtual machine. And this concept is very famous, okay? So if you talk about virtual machine, it's very famous, but question is why? Now think about this. If you go back to our previous example of our previous problem of Docker, oh, not Docker, but application. When you build application on your machine, which is there in your C drive, let's say, or maybe on your OS, it's working on your machine is because you have the required software like a web server, database, configuration, network components, everything they're configured and then you have application as well. Now, when you want to give this application to your colleague or to your testing team or to your ops team, you can only give the software, not the entire OS. But what if you can do that? Virtualization says you can do it. You know how? We have hardware, we got host OS, on top of that we have virtual machine OS or virtual machine. So normally we can implement virtual machine with the help of hypervisor. And then on top of it, we can install Ubuntu, right? And on Ubuntu, you can build your application. It's an OS, right? So open Ubuntu, do all the things which you're doing, you know, install your web server, install database, do all the configuration. You have your running app there. Now you don't have to give just this software. What you do is you give the entire OS, not the windows. 
the Ubuntu, the guest OS, which you talk about. Now, can you really copy the guest OS? Yes, you know, because it is not dependent on a physical hardware. It is dependent on the virtual hardware. Now, of course, internally, it uses the physical hardware. So let's say if you want to do even add two numbers on a calculator, which is on Ubuntu, your calc app talks to Ubuntu. Ubuntu talks to your hypervisor. Hypervisor talks to your host OS, which is Windows, and Windows talks to your hardware. So ultimately, when you're performing any operation that goes to your physical hardware, but you can actually copy the guest OS because it is watching, working on a software. So in this hypervisors or all these virtual machine softwares, they have a concept called creating an image. So what you do is, you have a running OS, the Ubuntu OS, you can simply save it. Literally save it. It will create an image out of it. Now at this point, it is difficult to understand image. But if you try to understand this, when you run your OS, it is running on your RAM, right? So all the components are open. When you want to give the OS to someone else, you create an image out of it. So you remove all the running part, you simply save a copy of it, this snapshot, the running snapshot of that OS, which is a file. And then you send a file to your, any, any uh, team, testing team or your colleague or your uh, uh, or your ops team. So make sure that you, they also have a hypervisor. Now these hypervisors are basically software like VMware. There are multiple options, virtual, virtual VM. So there are so many softwares. You can simply use those softwares. So let's say if you're using VMware, even they will be having VMware on their machine. They can simply copy this image, which you have given to them, and they can run it on their machine. Now you don't have to send them the project or the configuration because they got the actual OS itself. That's how you can solve the problem. So problem solved, right? Now the thing is, when you give the OS to your testing team, they will test it. If something is wrong, they will give you, give the project back and then you, you can make some changes. But what if everything is passing from testing team? Now you will send it to the production team. Now even they don't have to install any software. They have a VM software, any hypervisor, and then you can simply run this on this server, on the production server, and it will work. If it works on your machine, it will also work on their machine, no problem. It's because now your software is not dependent upon the underlying hardware, it's dependent upon the underlying virtual hardware, which is same everywhere. Now, you might be thinking, okay, so is it virtualization just came to solve your problems developer? See, not exactly. Now, if we go back to 1960s or 1970s, if you want to make application to run on a a uh, server, now servers are huge, right? They have huge amount of CPU, they have huge amount of RAM. Now, if you run one particular application on that server, don't you think we are wasting so much of RAM, so much of CPU? So the solution here is, what if you can install multiple apps on one server, one physical server? But the problem is, these apps can actually talk to each other. It's not safe, right? Example, let's say you're building a banking application which runs on one server, on the other hand, your friend is working on some other type of application, let's say crypto exchange, and then the, both the softwares are installed on the same server, same OS. Don't you think it will be a risky part? So you need isolation there. So what we can do is on normal servers, like we have physical servers, which are huge, you don't run one application, you run multiple. But then if you don't have isolation between application, it is risky. So what you do is on all the servers, they install the hardware, the physical hardware, then they install a host OS, then they install a hypervisor, and then on this hypervisor, you can run multiple virtual machines, not one, multiple guest OS, okay? And in each guest OS, you can install one app. Now, since the OS are different, you got the isolation and your app are safe. So that's how basically virtualization got famous, but we can also use it for our purpose, right? Where you don't have multiple guest OS, of course, you can use it for the production server, but as a developer also, you can build your application on a guest OS, and then you can give the guest OS to your to the other teams, other members. Do we have any problem here? Yes, there's a little bit of problem. Now think about this. To run your application, you are installing the entire new OS which you are giving to your team or some other team. Now don't you think you are wasting so much of RAM and CPU just to run that guest OS? I mean, your little bit of small machine, even if you're using i7 machine running two OS, will be a bit slow, right? So virtualization is good, but it consumes a lot of memory and CPU power because you're not just giving your software, you're giving the entire OS. There's additionally one problem, which is if you're using a host OS, you are paid for that Windows. And if you're using a guest OS, which is also a Windows, then you're again paying for the license for it. 
you need different license. Plus, if you're using a proprietary Linux-based distribution, again, you have to pay for the services and stuff. So that's a big problem, right? So it's good, virtualization is good, but there are some problems. We, do we have a solution for this? And the answer is yes, we have a solution called containerization. And that we'll see in the next video.